All right, we're back. Uh, of course, we give all praises to y'all. How about you now, shot? But uh, yeah, continue what you were saying, huh? Right. This, uh, I'm just continuing the scripture. This Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 18 it says, "I will first." It says, and, "And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land and filled my inheritance with the carcasses of the." There's detestable and abominable things. You know, that's why you got uh, homosexuality running rampant amongst our nation, adultery, you know, idolatry. You know, you got people worshiping other gods. You know, the scriptures say, How has the faithful city become a harlot? Verse 19, it says, O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of, my, in the day of affliction. Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things where, wherein there is no profit. Right. That's talking about the men of the Lord that's rising up. Because, you know, us coming, we, we wasn't born into this world knowing that we, we was Israelites. Right? We was born into this world knowing uh, or thinking that we were so-called blacks, Hispanics, you know, uh, that Christianity was the right way. Some brothers may think, may have thought uh, Islam was the right way. Why? Because our fathers inherited lies, man. Right. It says, it says, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Verse 20, shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Well, that's 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 those uh, Christians, mm -hmm. that's those uh, Islam, those those Egyptologists who thinking they they uh, got some power. Uh, all you have to do is gather black people together. Yeah. We need to come together economically, <laughs> spend our own money. See, they thinking they that that they, that they made themselves gods or yeah. or, or powers. You see, that's what mm -hmm. God means. It means a, a power, but you can't be a power without the Creator. You can't make yourself a power. You got to be born a god. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You can't say you got your books, man. You can't. You, the, book, the book is part of, it's part, it's the main source of our salvation. Mm -hmm. And what I was going to say, just to, uh, just to add on to what the brother was, uh, what the brother was basically going into, mm -hmm. is that we're now, in this, in this kingdom, we're inheriting lives. We're inheriting things that aren't, aren't you know gonna lead us to salvation but in the kingdom of heaven the most high is gonna already embed the law statutes and commandments in our hearts which we know our heart is our mind the Hebrew word for heart I believe is la'ab right so uh when the most high when we get in the kingdom of heaven I, I, I basically got this scripture that's gonna go into it which which goes into the second covenant of which what the most high is gonna do so we won't. So there will be no more inherited lies. There will be no more, uh, uh, no more, no more religion. No more Christianity. Mm -hmm. But this is basically uh, this, this is Hebrews eight eight. It says, "For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, which the house of Israel refers to the northern, uh, the northern kingdom, and the house of Judah uh, refers to the southern kingdom." Verse 9, it says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out, to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this covenant that I will make with them, with the house of Israel, after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, know the Lord, for all shall know him, from the least to the greatest. Verse 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, which was that Christianity, which was which was going off, you know, us being born into iniquity. 
and for their sins and their iniquities I will I will remember no more. Verse 13. And that he saith a new covenant. He hath made the old the first old. Now that which decayeth waxeth old is ready to vanish away. And that basically that basically goes into what the most high is gonna embed in us when we get in the kingdom, you know? Mm -hmm. or, or for the elect, the most high is gonna the most high already is is somewhat embedded that truth into us. That's why we that's why we have faith, you know? The most high has given us the, the most high has given us that understanding. But when we get into the kingdom of heaven, the the whole children of Israel aren't gonna aren't gonna wanna be homosexuals. They're not gonna wanna be going off and serving other gods and being Muslims, being Christians, being uh, uh Methodists, you know, Baptists, all of this other all of these other philosophies that, that Babylon has put out there. And that that's basically what I had to say about that aspect. Another thing too, it does it says uh uh, then shall no man teach his brethren saying this is uh, pretty much this is the law yeah. you know because reason being is because there's not gonna it's already gonna be embedded within us we're not gonna have to teach you know and not for nothing I was on the job you know trying to teach this one Jay, uh trying to kick the truth to him you know trying to explain it to him and pretty much you know what was the end all be all of the conversation was he said you know what I'm gonna believe in my God you believe in your God and in the end we'll see what happens but the thing is, when when the end comes, he's not gonna want to see that judgment. He's not gonna want to see it because it's not gonna be pretty, man. He he he's not gonna want to uh come. Uh, come. That's a good scripture. Huh? That's uh Amos five and uh twenty. Oh, that's five, spirit, five and eighteen. Too. Yeah, there's Amos five verse eighteen. It says, "Woe well, unto you that desire the day of the Lord." And that's a uh, it has an explanation uh, exclamation mark. It says, to what end is it for you? Yeah. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not for nothing. A lot of these jakes are in that same exact spirit. Uh, uh, I'm going to believe in what I believe in. And we'll see what happens in the end. You're so, not going to want to see that judgment in the end, man. It's a lot. It, it's a lot. Uh, if the scripture said, um, it's darkness and not light. So how are you going to see in the end? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <'Cause, laughs> what they're going to come to find out is that our, our power is the real power. Yeah, how about Shem Yahusha is the only one and true and living power. Uh -huh. And when they when they come to find that out, is when they're going to be burnt by them thermonuclear missiles, man. That's right. That's when they're going to find out that our power was the true and living uh -huh. power, man. And I'm going to just read this last scripture in Jeremiah uh, chapter 16. This is Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 21. It says, Therefore, behold, I will I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know mine hand and my might. Right. And they shall know that my name is the Lord. How about Shem Right, so there's no asking questions in the yeah. end. You got to know the answers before the end. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, and we, we read earlier the Most High revealed uh, his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Right. So if you're not a, if you're not a part of that, then you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get it. You're not gonna be able to understand it, man. And that's why we thank the Most High because it, it's it's a privilege to to have this type of knowledge, man. The Most High has to, that means the Most High personally chose you, man. But the, what does the Scripture say? Uh, give diligence to make that calling and election sure. So yeah, we chosen. But we're not sure if we the actual chosen. That's right. You know, we chosen to do the works, but we hoping to be the elect. That's why we continuously giving diligence. Uh, because, like you said, uh, you know, we came in believing in Jesus yeah. through some type of church. But since that, and we've been chosen to know the truth, we understand that we've been separated from that. From that type of thinking so it it's not that's not it that church is not it that christianity is not it what's it is the truth right. you know and what, what to say the scripture said the truth shall uh make you free that's right not christianity not the law not on you know what i'm saying not not the law only it's through faith it's through prayer it's through supplication. It's through salvation. You see what I'm saying? Like Ephesians said, there's many more aspects. 
you got to live this thing, man. You can't just uh, uh, think you're already there. One thing my father always said, Christians believe that they are already there. They're already in heaven. Yeah, huh. they believe they saved. Right. When you say I'm saved, that means you're on the shore. You dry it off. You don't have to worry about swimming no goddamn more. You're not drowning. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That that's 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 what it means to be saved. That you that you safe from harm. Nah, well, what the scriptures say in in uh, brother read um, Second Ezra. It's gonna be fighting. It's gonna be not being able to, to go uh, as you please. You talk about mocking the beast, people uh, following you, knowing where you are, holding up uh, uh, your bread. That don't sound like salvation. That sounds like still being a prisoner. I had, a, I had one aspect uh, that I had to bring out about the kingdom too. This is uh, Matthew 6 verse 33. It says, but seek, ye the, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all shall be added. Yeah, and all these things shall be added unto you. So that's another aspect of the kingdom too. It's like the brother said, if, if uh, this, this scripture wouldn't be relevant if we're we already saved, or you're a Christian, you're already saved. What kingdom would you be seeking, you know? Right, that's why we're supposed to be seeking the kingdom right now. Because we know that everything in the kingdom is going to be better than what it is right now. And we know that in the kingdom, we're not going to have to worry about, about, about things, uh, about worldly things that we have to worry about right now. Like, yeah, come on. I see some, like, these Christians, man, they think, like the brother's saying, they think that they're in their heaven right now. They don't want to see um, the Lord come back because right. they know if the Lord come back, there's gonna have to be judgment paid, man, right. for whatever they did in, in their past. Man. Right. Hey, that's that's not only these Christians, man. That's a lot of these people out here, man. Right. These people don't want the Lord to come back, no, because they know that they wicked as hell. You know. Right. And, and another thing too, you know, brothers, you know, of course we go off because we under these chains of darkness, but the scriptures say, uh, offend less. You know, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to, we're trying our best to, to sin as least as possible. That's right. But we're bound by it uh, because of our flesh. You know, we're not in those celestial bodies that's to be received in the kingdom of heaven right that's now. Right. You know, and also it's virtually impossible to keep the laws and, and, and statutes and commandments in this society, man. Because Esau, he, he, he's so crafty and he does things that we don't even know about that you know, like just just for instance, like our shirts. You know, it could it can have mixed linen. That's going off right there. You know, but that's all under. Uh, that's that's because we we under the subjection of these devils, man. And the scriptures say that's part of the curses too. You know, we shall uh, we shall be in the want of uh, of all things. Um, in, in Deuteronomy, that's the yeah, come. Well, that's why that's why you know i've been saying that we have to seek salvation man, mm -hmm. because salvation is not it's not a s-t-r-i-g-h-t way you know you gotta you gotta be crafty you gotta move around certain pitfalls nice. certain traps okay. women society mm -hmm. you know you gotta move around certain things man you got basically you gotta snake around things that's why a snake is crafty you gotta move about um, for salvation you can't just say i'm already sa saved you have to you have to seek salvation. You got to seek that gold mine, man. You got to seek that kingdom, that crown, because it's not just a given, man. You have to you have to work for it, man. You know, this is, we all we all works in progress, man. You know, but uh, according to uh, uh, give me our uh, first Peter, uh, the first chapter, first Peter, first chapter. It's first Peter chapter one, verse one. It says, Peter, an apostle of Hamashiach Yahushai, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and by Bithynia. Bithynia. Uh -huh. See, that's what, that's what the Aki said. He said uh, that we, we wasn't born in, into knowing the truth, right? We were chosen, right? Uh -huh. And we were scattered, calling ourselves strangers, calling, us, calling ourselves strange things. Christian, Buddhist, 
uh, Rastafarian, whatever the case may be, we were strangers. Go ahead. Verse 2, it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father. Right, and that's what we're seeking. We're seeking if we are the elect. We doing the things as an elect would do, but we have to endure to the end, man. Go ahead. Through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience. Just that the cleansing by the word, right? How should a young man cleanse his ways? Right? By the washing of the water by the word. This is this is how we seek the sanctification or the cleansing to be separated from this foolishness in this world, man. The pitfalls. We gotta we gotta Maneuver about. Go ahead. It says until obedience and sprink and sprinkling of the blood of Hamashiach Yahushai. Now it says this. It said uh, read that again. That last part. It says and sprinkling of the blood of Hamashiach. No, before that. Before that. Uh, it says through sanctification uh -huh. of the spirit right. until obedience. Obedience. Yo, that's a key word right there, man. You gotta be obedient. You know what it is to be obedient. A dog's supposed to be your man's best friend, but he's not even obedient. So you got to be obedient to your creator, man. To the one who sprinkled the blood on you, man. The one who had chosen you uh, from, the, from the beginning, before the world began. Obedience will carry you through. Go ahead. It says, in sprinkling of the blood of Hamashiach, Yahushua. Right. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Right. Blessed be the Most High and Father of the Lord, Hamashiach Yahushai, with according to his uh, abundant right. your mercy, have gotten us again. Again, that means some, the elect, the elect had felt fallen off. Didn't uh, didn't Moses fall off? Didn't uh, Solomon fall off? Didn't David fall off? These are elect men. They fell off too, but they they going to be saved in the end. Salvation is for the elect men. Go ahead. It says, which according to his abundant mercy has right. begotten us again right. into a lively hope. Right. Because this is a living thing, man. We see, when we read these scriptures, it, it, the, the, uh, the understanding and the idea just, it, it's like a light bulb go off every time, man. When you when you find a new breakdown, when you when you uh, heard another word or another comforting scripture from, from, from men, how, how your situation can be ratified, how your situation can, uh, uh, can, can uh, you learn from your, your, your situation and, and not do it again. You know, that's a beautiful thing, man, when you don't stumble again. See, our people, two-thirds stumble and stumble and stumble. They used to got them uh, uh, scars on their knees. They like living in the gutter. Over and over again, they're doing the same bull. The same things they're doing over and over. So they get used to uh, uh, feeling pain. Go ahead. Yeah, because uh, real quick, they say if you, you know, you keep making mistakes uh, over and over again, it, long, it no longer becomes a mistake. You know, it becomes a habit. You know, but, you know, just pick it back and off of what you're saying. Definitely. But, uh, where's the Shalaki verse 3? It says, Blessed be the the, the power and father of our Lord Hamashiach Yahushua, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Hamashiach Yahushua from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and un undefiled and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you. Right, we, you know, all these things in the world, all the things that you that you tried to uh, obtain or try to it all it all went to shit so to speak it never materialized you know you thinking uh, oh, I'm, I'm on this path I'm gonna do it but if it's not thus saith the Lord if it's not for you it all went to the wayside so we got to seek we got to seek the, uh, uh, the things that are heaven we got to seek the things that can't be corrupted uh, it says uh Verse 5, it says, Who are kept by the power of the Lord through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Right, and that's the point. That's that's why we're speaking of it today. Because they're being revealed unto us today. And what we do, we're trying to fish 
the other men, the other like men, other like-minded men. You know, tabernacle of God is the tabernacle of Yahweh. Bashem Yahushua is with men, man. We seeking these men, the uh, righteous rulers of the kingdom, man. We got to gather up the government. Anything else? verse 11 it says in that day will I rise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen God. and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruin and will build and will build it as in the days of old it says that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name saith the Lord that doeth that, that doeth this it says behold the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall take over the reaper, and the treaders of the grapes, him, it says, and the, and the treaders of the grapes, him that soweth seed. No, no longer workers, we become masters. Mm -hmm. We become the owners, the rightful, the rightful inheritance, you know? We, we, we uh, and, uh, and also, talking about uh, sowing seeds, which is this truth. It's not going to be needed anymore. Like the brother brought out, is is no more uh, no more need to teach teach Israel his ways or the Lord's ways. You know, we don't have to be uh, workers anymore uh, doing this work because all Israel shall know. You know, that, and that's a righteous that's that's a righteous kingdom, man. When all when all Israel know of the Lord's ways, talk about his laws, statutes, commandments. Uh, do, uh, doing them uh, without, you know, just just like you said, it becomes habit. You know, we're going to do it right. We're going to live right. This is what the kingdom is all about. That's right. Go ahead. Uh, I got another precept. This, uh, Daniel 7, verse 25. It says, And he spake great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, think to change the times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. Oh Lord. It says, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the king and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, oh, Lord. whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominion shall serve and obey him. God. Right, that's talking about how pretty much uh, in the end, if somebody could get uh, 2 Ezra 6 verse 9, you know how pretty much uh, the, the kingdom is going to be stripped from Esau and delivered into the hands of, of Jacob, man. <laughs> And we're gonna uh, we're gonna possess an everlasting kingdom, man. See this kingdom right here, and all even all the other kingdoms in the past, they were all temporary, man. Right. They once had a beginning, and then and then they they had an end. But our kingdom, which is to be received, is gonna be an everlasting kingdom, man, from generations to generations and forevermore. Con. This is second Ezra. Con. This is second Ezra six. Lot. You want a six verse? Uh, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, okay. It's eight verse three. Uh, maybe it's six verse fifty four. No, it's a lot. So, um, Esau is the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Second Ezra six verse. Yeah, you know, get out. Uh, second Ezra is chapter six verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world, uh -huh. and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Uh -huh. Come, on, we talking about a transition, right? Like uh, as we as we began, you know, Egypt didn't fall in a day. There was ten plagues. There was a plea, the a plea from Moses to, to Pharaoh. There was a uh, there was a, a a Passover. So it was a process, a process for Israel to be delivered. So same same with Esau, man. Esau is going through his process right now, and it's going. You know, is is what what he going what he not going to see. What he's not going to see is uh, 
salvation in this kingdom from, from, from these plagues. He's not going to see it. His process is, is, is his process of going down is right before his eyes, man. Go ahead. That, I think that was it on that. Read it again. Second Ezra, chapter six, verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. That's right. I mean, uh, Esau, like the like the scripture, like the scripture says, is going to be the end of the world. Uh, which which that's that's what we living in today. And Jacob's world, which is the kingdom of heaven, is going to be uh, uh, is going to be Yahushua's world. Uh, this is um this is Matthew this is Matthew's so like in Matthew 19 verse 27 it says then answered uh, Peter and said unto him behold we have forsaken all and follow thee which shall we which shall we have therefore and Yahweh said unto them verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me and the regeneration of the Son of Man shall sit in the shall sit in the throne of his glory. Ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He says, And every one that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit and shall inherit everlasting life. It says, But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Right. So pretty much Peter uh, Peter was telling Yahweh Shah, you know, that he, he pretty much forsaken everything in his life. And what shall we inherit? And the Most High pretty much, uh, Salaki, Yahweh Shah pretty much explained to him that whosoever forsake everything in this life for my name's sake and for the most high you know he shall he shall be judging the 12 tribes of israel and he shall be sitting upon 12 thrones and that's what's in, uh, to be inherited in the kingdom of heaven man sure that's what we enduring and hardness for you know that's what we're praying and giving all supplications to the most high for one simple word rulership God. you know that's what that's what the kingdom of heaven is rulership because if you're gonna say kingdom Mm -hmm. Right? The word kingdom is what? Dominion of the king. That king is uh, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, King David. The 12 apostles are on down in your perspective lots. You know? Ruling. Israel ruling. You know? In righteousness. You know, that's what we seek. So the kingdom of heaven is a glorious thing, man, to, to, to think upon. <laughs> When you when you think about the kingdom of heaven, I mean, you talking about rulership, man. You talking about being in being in charge and righteousness, man. Not not being a slouch. You know, that's that's what we seeking. You want, you want to say anything else? Any hockey? I'm gonna close it up, then. Yeah, yeah, man. And with that, I'd like to give all praise to you. How about Shemi Shad? Be honest uh, to our elders and apostles, and shalom to the elect. Shalom. shalom. shalom.